theme for this year is rebuilding with grit. And uh, given the year that we are almost at the end of, I'm pretty sure that there isn't a single person here at this conclave with whom this theme doesn't resonate. But what we've been through in this year is really unprecedented in terms of the level of volatility and uncertainty at a global scale. Yet, we have heard and seen amazing, awe-inspiring stories of entrepreneurs who've shown true grit uh, in the face of these difficult challenges. But what is grit? Uh, grit to me, Achana, is perhaps the single most important trait for an entrepreneur to have. Grit is resilience. Grit is perseverance in the face of adversity. Grit is the will to put your best foot forward every single day in the face of whatever challenges that might come your way. And grit is uh, the resolve to get up and continue on your entrepreneurial journey, uh, no matter how many times you fall. Um, but at the Ascent Conclave 2020, we are proud to bring you inspiring stories and learnings from thought leaders, from change makers and innovators who have shown true grit by embracing every challenge with courage, passion and perseverance. Our aim through the 17 sessions across these four days is to create a shift in thinking and to introduce reframing techniques where all of us can learn and build grit in all areas of our life. What has been that one defining moment during these pandemic times when you thought or you felt you should grit? Um, well, grit is something that I have identified with quite strongly because every entrepreneur, I think, aspires to build grit. And I think I have built some out of it, but you can never have too much grit. It's always good to build more. Um, you know, in 2017, my company went through uh, the toughest phase of its existence, and I personally went through the toughest phase of my entrepreneurial journey. Um, it was, I mean, it, I won't get into too much detail, but it was basically because of a couple of uh, bad strategic decisions I made in previous years. And we ended up in a situation where to get out of it, we had to take some tough calls. We had to exit a couple of lines of business. We had to let go of about 25% of our workforce. And uh, it was bloody hard. Uh, and But yet, I wouldn't trade it for anything else in the world because the experience and the learnings that I got from it I couldn't have managed to get from any other source, I think. Um, and uh, so when it came time to face the pandemic, honestly, I think we had built an upgrade as a company that it really didn't feel so hard. And I'm not saying it was easy, but we've gotten through it and you know things seem to be a lot better now. And I would put it down to the fact that we had faced those challenges uh, in the past, right? Um, you know, and. I think as the uh, occasionally great and mostly racist uh, Winston Churchill once said, uh, never waste a good crisis. And uh, in every crisis, one can find the seeds of opportunity. And I think uh, there is one man who I know uh, who embodies this wonderfully, someone whom I've known personally for the past 15 years, ever since I met him at the gym, sweating away at the elliptical next to me while he was reading his Harvard Business School case studies uh, while working out. Uh, someone whom I've gotten to know personally over the years after that, someone whom I've grown to admire and respect greatly uh, for, well, for what he's achieved, but more importantly for the manner in which he's achieved all that he's achieved. Mr. Harsh Mariwala, Chairman of Marico, Chairman and Managing Director of Kaya, and more importantly for us today, the founder of the Ascent Foundation. Over to you, Harsh. Good evening, friends. Uh, I'm very, very happy that we are holding uh, the Ascent Conclave in a virtual format this year. We've been holding Conclave for the last uh, many years, and it has evoked a very, very positive feedback from those who have attended the Conclave. But uh, this year, unfortunately, we can't have a physical format. So we decided to hold this in a virtual format. Uh, we also realized that virtually it's very difficult for individuals to uh, be glued in uh, to their iPad or their phone or uh, their computer uh, over a long period of time. So we concluded that it may be a better option for us to do this over, over four days in the evening. So our format is going to be from 5 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. every evening from 25th to 28th of November. 
And I must say that I'm very, very happy with uh, uh, our list of uh, uh, speakers and the topics. And I may add that uh, they have been curated very well by the Ascent team. Uh, and I'm looking forward to an extremely exciting, informative, and a learning conclave this year. Uh, the positive side of holding a virtual conclave is that uh, you can invite uh, speakers uh, who would normally not be able to come physically. So this year, we have leveraged that opportunity by inviting the likes of Dr. Raghuram Rajan, who is based out of USA, uh, Kiran Mazumdar Shaw, who is based out of Bangalore, and many other speakers who would not have been able to come here if we had held it in the physical form. Similarly, in terms of attendees, uh, we have kept it open all over the world. And I'm happy to say that we've got a very good response, uh, not only from India, uh, not only from big cities in India, but smaller towns also, as well as many delegates registering from out of India. So all in all, I would say that virtual uh, has given us an opportunity to reach out to more people and to more speakers. And considering the fact that it is an ex extremely interesting program, I would urge you to spread the word around to your friends, family, uh, to other entrepreneurs uh, who will find this conclave extremely engaging. And it may be worth their while to register uh, for this conclave. It's not yet too late to be registered. So please do register yourself. Uh, to take advantage, not only yourself, but to your other friends, families, acquaintances, so that they can take advantage of the excellent program which, put, which we put forward. The theme of our conclave this year is rebuilding with grit. I like the word grit because uh, this is uh, something which is very, very relevant in today's context. I happen to read a book uh, on this subject, uh, the name of the book is The Grit, written by Angela Duckworth. And I was deeply influenced uh, by this book. And um, I think the book mentions that grit is the never give up attitude we have as, an, as entrepreneurs. It is a combination of passion and perseverance. It is having a fierce resolve in everything that you do and demonstrating determination, resilience, and tenacity. You can grow great from the outside, inside out, or from outside in. And you can do this through interacting with your parents, coaches, your bosses, mentors, and friends. Developing your personal grit depends critically on other people. So we believe that through these next four days, we will enable you to improve your grit. We will share stories of individuals who have overcome serious setbacks and bounced back. And I'm sure with these personal examples, your grit levels would improve. Grit is very, very relevant in today's times because of its because of pandemic. And I think all of us know that we are in a storm. But the boats we are in are different. So some people may be relatively better off compared to others who may be experiencing a higher degree of stress, anxiety, and business issues. So how can organizations cope up with this pandemic? And what is the role of leaders in this crisis? And I believe that the, the leadership role has changed because of the pandemic. I think most leaders have realized that it, it pays to be very authentic, to give a true and fair picture of what you're going through, what the organization is going through, and the likely impact of these changes on the stakeholders, whether it is employees, or shareholders, or associates, or the society. So it's very, very important to communicate in an authentic manner to all your stakeholders of the likely implications of this crisis on their lives. And one has to do it in, as I said earlier, in a true and fair manner. In addition to authenticity, I think it's very important to show signs of caring and empathy because uh, we have not seen anything like this in our lifetime. And all of us are going through differing degrees of stress and anxiety. 
So it's very important that leaders exhibit this empathy and caring, not only to all the stakeholders, but to their families, to whoever they are uh, they're getting exposed to. Uh, we have seen that uh, uh, in, in terms of employees, we've seen that uh, it is a great opportunity for leaders to actually get into uh, the families of employees because most of them, especially in the lockdown days, were at home. So one can use that opportunity to actually reach out to the family members. And by doing that, the overall uh, impact it could have on the family would be beneficial to the employee because the family will understand what the organization stands for, what are the values of the organization, and what is the purpose of the organization. So in case of Marico, my company, we took many, many initiatives, uh, especially in the first three, four months in involving family and actually creating very exciting, very interesting programs, contests to involve the family. So starting with things like cooking classes to Zumba classes to uh, fitness events, uh, uh, teaching them hobbies on art, um, a whole host of initiatives, virtually new initiatives every two, three days were being rolled out to the family members. And we saw amazing participation, not only from the employees, but also from their parents, the spouses, as well as the children. Uh, we saw that uh, the overall need to look at health was very, very crucial. And uh, if you led a good healthy lifestyle, whether the food you were eating or the fitness levels you had, it would actually act as some sort of a protection uh, to the pandemic. So we started classes like yoga classes, fitness classes, because of mental health issues and anxiety and stress, we also had meditation classes. We taught people how to meditate and also how to do yoga, which is also very, very beneficial in the area of mental health issues. So all in all, um, I was very happy with the, with the initiatives we undertook. We also had an initiative where we uh, recognized our own members. We call our employees members. Uh, whenever they did something extraordinary. So we had a Marico recognized program wherein anything extraordinary done by any employee to meet this pandemic challenge was shared with uh, all our organization members. And I think that also acted as a motivator to not only those who did something extraordinary, but to everybody else. And I must say that I must have seen at least in the last uh, six months, 100 to 200 emails uh, recognizing individuals who played an extraordinary role to meet the challenges, the business challenges in terms of supply chain, in terms of sales uh, and whatever else uh, the role demanded. In terms of associates, uh, it's very important to keep them engaged and to tell them uh, what is the impact uh, this will have on their business. And if need be, uh, also teach them issues about safety, issues about if they have liquidity problems, then, you know, help them mitigate that problem from a short term point of view. So one would have to involve key associates in terms of the likely impact of all this on their business. In terms of customers, this was a great opportunity to connect with customers, especially if you, uh, if you are in a B2C business. So in a business like Kaya, our skincare business, we started doing a lot of webinars on skincare um, and I think that played a very important role in terms of, uh, you know, engaging our customers. And these were free webinars. We also started a uh, free consultation uh, with, our, uh, with our clients and non-clients in terms of what issues they were facing with their skin. And also recommending a uh, set of products which could be, uh, which could be useful uh, to meet these uh, skin issues. Uh, so this started off in a very, shall I say, in a non-transactional uh, way. It was free advice given to people through e-consultations. But after doing it for a few months, we realized that indeed there was an opportunity for us to convert this into a separate vertical uh, as a business. So what we've done in the recent past, in the last one or two months, is that we are now offering uh, e-consultation to people who are... Uh, where we do not have centers in smaller towns where there may not be good dermatologists. 
so it's a great opportunity to actually increase business uh do e consultation sell products and wherever there are uh, people where we have centers then also to uh, to enroll them for our services so what are the opportunities organizations can leverage there are of course all of us feel that we are in a lot of problems but i see the opposite side of that in terms of opportunities and i see that huge opportunities have uh, have been thrown up because of pandemic the way we are interacting and today's conclave is a clear example through the digital route is a great opportunity for organizations to leverage digital way of working so working from home is something which we were not used to but now we are very comfortable i have not gone to office for last 7 months and i i am wondering whether you know i can be like this uh, for a longer period of time once things go back to normalcy of course there are benefits of social interactions i am not discounting that but many a times i will feel guilty now if i have to call somebody to my office for a for a half an hour meeting and that person would waste uh, in a city like bombay maybe one hour in commuting so what am i doing i am actually uh, making it far more difficult for that person to come here it takes much more energy time and also unnecessary expense of commuting so i see that increasingly the fact that we have all got used to this habit of doing uh, virtual meetings means that a lot of our interaction in future will continue through this route especially short term meeting especially meeting where people have been called for an interview from out of town uh, just for a few hours this route is if equally effective so i think that's one way to save uh, costs and also to to save time uh, in terms of working from home uh, depending on the kind of business one is in one sees an opportunity of actually locating people not in big cities but in smaller towns where there is connectivity so that the cost of staying in those towns compared to big cities is much much lower and that will help organizations to reduce overall cost of talent because the availability of talent in these small towns uh, is at a much much lower uh, cost because the cost of staying is much much lower whether it's the rentals or the overall cost of schooling or any other uh, areas which impact the cost so i would say that organizations will look at this depending again on the kind of business they are in to shift some of the people to smaller rural areas to improve their cost structure we have seen new geopolitical realignments happening because of the crisis and the biggest impact it has had is uh, is wherever there is an interaction with uh, any Uh, supply chain issues with china because uh, many uh, organizations and many uh, countries have realized that over over dependence on one country is not not safe so efforts are made by many organizations to spread that risk from from china to other countries and we have seen countries like vietnam bangladesh indonesia leveraging that opportunity and i hope Uh, that the indian government uh, comes out with uh, far more aggressive policies to leverage this opportunity irrespective of that i also see an opportunity where any indian entrepreneurs is able to offer something uh, which is being made in china at a very attractive price point or a similar price point to actually uh, to get this business from shifted from china to india so that's a great area of opportunity going forward so uh, what do we see in terms of uh, trends uh, which are likely to come in the future many of these trends have have happened in the past uh, or started in the past but now they are getting accelerated because of pandemic um when there was a lockdown we saw that uh, we were uh, breathing much more fresher air and people have realized that uh, environment is very very critical to their health so what should we be doing to improve the quality of air we breathe and that throws a whole host of opportunities for all of us starting from the fact that we we can have air purifiers at home we we should go towards more cleaner energy generation whether it's wind solar or whatever else so if there is a pollution then how do we protect our skin so can can we launch uh, 
a range of skin care products which uh, which mitigate the effect of pollution um, can we move increasingly toward electrical vehicles which do not cause any pollution even eating non vegetarian food adds to uh, environmental stress so i see a big shift also towards uh, vegetarian food the fact that uh, this pandemic has emerged out of wildlife eat in china also means that people will be far more sensitive to eat more of safer vegetarian food and the trend will shift towards vegetarian as well as vegan kind of foods going forward we are seeing that uh, the alternate meats part you know whether it's made from uh, veg- any vegetables whether it's peas or soya bean that whole industry is thriving and i see a huge opportunity in alternate proteins going forward earlier we never used to wash our hands as regularly as we were supposed to wash because that's very hygienic so hygiene has got a big big uh, thrust because of pandemic and we will see that individuals will go on washing hands uh, more frequently than in the past we've seen increased usage of sanitizers disinfectants uh, in mariko we saw an opportunity when the pandemic happened uh, to uh, to give a product which was uh, helping uh, the the housewife to uh, clean vegetables uh, and fruits uh, so we came out with a product uh, under the brand name of veggie clean and that removes all the not only the dirt but the viruses and within a short period of time in the month we launched this product so opportunities like this have emerged many more opportunities have emerged because of of the pandemic i also see opportunities in terms of touch free shopping touch free coffee because people are scared so we will see that increasingly more and more usage of robotics not only because it's touch free but also because it may be saving costs uh, so i think robotics uh, technology also is going to play a very very important role uh, very briefly i have covered health earlier but health is going to be very very crucial so healthy foods uh, weight which is also one of the causes of cardio diabetic issues is going to be very very crucial so people are going to be far more uh, weight conscious uh, and many of our preventive diseases can be tackled through better lifestyle so whether it is better weight through exercising or eating healthy foods if we take care of that on our own uh, i will see we i can see that there are great opportunities uh, for this businesses and that will ensure that our lifestyle improves and our incidence of diabetes and we are the largest diabetic uh, population in the world would improve dramatically if we if we improved our lifestyle in terms of mental health the trend which uh, which had started a few years back has got accelerated dramatically because all of us are facing stress coming in from different angles whether it is a business stress or stress of staying at home or the fear of contracting pandemic or the stress because the children are uh, are also not able to go to school uh, you're not able to exercise you're not allowed to go out now things have eased out but all this is uh, added to our stress and i think we are living in last few months we are living in a very highly stressed environment and if you can proactively deal with this by looking at uh, things like meditation how to ensure that we do Uh, mental health we take mental health proactively do yoga and uh, if at all if we need some help then can we actually go to a mental health professional or a help call line where we can actually discuss our issues and try and address them by sharing our issues with other people staying at home also means that there is going to be more and more opportunities for other equipments whether it is air conditioners or whatever is going to make our life easier robotics cleaning machines we have seen that the overall demand for home games have improved so again a whole host of opportunity have emerged because of staying at home uh, we have seen that uh, in terms of e learning uh, the valuations of company like byju have just shot up dramatically and we have seen many other players coming into play to offer solutions in the area of e learning e-commerce is something which uh, in fmcg the overall contribution of e-commerce prior to pandemic was in the range of 1 or 2% and now it is double treble depending on the kind of uh, products you are offering so that's a 
new area of opportunity for FMCG products because e-commerce offers products at uh, in a very, shall I say, transparent pricing mechanism, uh, offers products where if you're not happy with the products, you can return the products and also the convenience of not going out uh, uh, and buying the product. So e-commerce has caught on uh, much more and the trend will continue going forward. Coming to Indian economy, it's, uh, it's a situation where some businesses are doing well. They say it's a K-shaped behavior. Some uh, sectors like uh, FMCG, pharma, uh, telecom are doing extremely well and uh, they are on the upper side of K. Some other sectors have got badly impacted like hospitality, hotels, restaurants, and they are on the bottom side. But I I am seeing that as things are getting back to normal, even the the hospitality, hotels, restaurants uh, have started showing signs of improvement. Um, in our Kaya business, which also involves physical touch, people have to go to the centers. We have seen that uh, I think individuals are uh, coming back to our centers. Of course, we are exercising great caution in terms of getting our people tested, uh, wearing PPE equipment, masks and all that. And we've seen that as the confidence increases, our businesses increased. For the quarter of July to September, we did about 75% of our normal turnover. And this quarter, we expect the turnover to go 85 to 90%. So things are getting back to normal, which is a very, very good sign. Even airlines, the overall capacity utilization is increasing. Uh, so I see that uh, this uh, sectors which have not done well, they will recover over a period of time. Finally, just as I come to end, the technology is going to play a very, very important role in India in terms of giving Philip to sectors like uh, agriculture, education, healthcare. So I see great opportunities in terms of leveraging newer technologies too to make a big impact in the sectors. Um, so I think uh, that's where uh, we are today. Uh, hopefully we will not go through a second wave as Europe and USA is going through. But most importantly, if that has to happen, we have to lead a disciplined li li lifestyle. We have to do physical distancing. We have to wear masks and stay disciplined. They say never waste a crisis. And this is a big, big crisis. There have been huge learnings. There have been huge insights and also many opportunities, as I've said earlier. And we should leverage on these opportunities. Many of the trends have got accelerated. Many innovations have happened. So there is always a positive side to a crisis. And that's why I said never waste a crisis. And now that we are coming almost to a close to the crisis in the next six months or maximum one year, we will we should look at the positive side of this crisis. Um, all I can say is this too will pass. Look at the positives and wish you all the best. Thank you.